Hello, everybody. My name is Bradley Karat. I am a current PhD student at Western University and also a current COMP scholar. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about my project called Investigating the Macro Microstructure of the Human Hippocampus. So the hippocampus plays key functional roles in memory formation and storage, episodic recollection, and spatial navigation. Here I'm showing you an MRI uh, where the white circles denote the location of the hippocampus, which is in the medial temporal lobe. The dendrites, axons, and fiber pathways that collectively make up the microstructure of the hippocampus are key in producing these functions. And specific microstructural properties are known to be differentially affected by neurological disorders. So diffusion MRI can be used to probe microstructure, and it does that by sensitizing the MRI signal to the movement of water molecules, uh, which are sensitive to its microstructural environment, as you can see here. Current in vivo hippocampal diffusion studies tend to be nonspecific towards microstructure. Typically, average measures across whole hippocampi or subfields, which inherently averages across multiple microstructural properties. Furthermore, they suffer from issues with manual and automatic segmentation registration methods. On the manual side, there tends to be landmark variability, uh, which are essential to actually segment the hippocampus. Um, and there's also disagreement on those landmarks. And then on the automatic side, where you try to register a hippocampus to a gold standard atlas, there tends to be gyrification distortion and the loss of the contiguity of hippocampal subfields. Furthermore, correlations between macro and microstructure are currently lacking within the hippocampus. A previous cortical study showed there's a relationship between laminar thickness and neurite dispersion. And as mentioned previously, the automatic segmentation methods may distort gyrification, which if related to microstructure could actually affect those measures. So the questions we ask here are, how can we deal with current segmentation and registration issues within the hippocampus? Can we detect specific hippocampal microstructural properties? And is there a relation between macro and microstructure? HipUnfold is a newly developed open source software for hippocampal unfolding and segmentation. It provides inherent alignment between hippocampi in a 2D unfolded space, and it avoids the loss of the contiguity of hippocampal subfields, which are seen in uh, common automatic segmentation methods. HipUnfold calculates a hippocampal specific geodesic coordinate system. So we go from this Cartesian coordinate system in the MRI to a geodesic coordinate system that respects hippocampal folding. The coordinates transition smoothly across the anterior, posterior, proximal, distal, and inner and outer directions. So here's a 3D model of the hippocampus. The jet coloring underneath represents those geodesic coordinates, and you can see they transition anterior, posterior, proximal, distal, and across laminae or inner and outer. And finally, hippocampal microstructure tends to be highly aligned along these directions. So here we used 100 unrelated subjects from the HCP 1200 dataset. And we ran neurite orientation dispersion and density imaging modeling using 1.25 millimeter isotropic diffusion data. We utilized the neurite vectors, which are essentially vectors at each voxel that represent the orientation of the underlying microstructure. We use the orientation dispersion index, or ODI, and the neurite density index, or NDI. And we quantified the alignment of the microstructural orientation along the APP and IO directions with the knowledge that specific microstructural properties tend to be highly aligned along one of these directions. Correlations between macro and microstructure were also performed, where macrostructure includes things like thickness, curvature, and gyrification, which are all outputs of hip unfold, and microstructure includes ODI and NDI in this case. So here I'm showing you the mean and standard deviation of the alignment of the microstructure relative to these hippocampal axes in the left hemisphere. Here I'm showing you it plotted in folded and unfolded space, unfolded space being uh, our coordinates only transi transition across the anterior, posterior, and distal the proximal axes because our values are sampled across a constant thickness or across the mid surface. So we only transition across these two axes. And you can see the subfield labels here. So here in unfolded space, uh, we can tell that our microstructural orientation is highly aligned anterior, posterior in the body of the dentate gyrus to CA2 and also in the body of the subiculum. Our microstructure is highly aligned proximal distally in CA1 and also in the head of CA2 and CA3. And finally, our microstructure is highly aligned across laminate or in this inner and outer direction in CA1 and also in the tail of the subiculum. Now, I don't have a ton of time to elucidate some of these properties that uh, may drive these values that we see, but for example, you can imagine that we know a priori uh, microstructural properties in CA1 that are oriented proximal distally. And so perhaps these values here in this region are actually capturing that property that we know is oriented along that direction but future studies are needed to actually confirm this. Here I'm showing a linear model that was built using features of curvature, gyrification, and thickness to predict uh, ODI. So here you can see the real ODI values and the predicted ODI values. And in this case, macrostructure can explain about 17% of the variance in ODI. And if we do the same thing with NDI, uh, again, with the real values on the X and the predicted on the Y, 
we can see that macrostructure can explain about 10% of the variance in NDI. So the main takeaways from these results are that specific microstructural properties may be elucidated based on their relative hippocampal orientation. Furthermore, macrostructure does appear to explain some of the variance in microstructure, and they do appear to be correlated. And then finally, hip unfold provides a comprehensive way to examine the hippocampus. With the remaining time, I actually just want to go through a quick run through of the hip unfold software. Hip unfold is a open source software developed by Dr. Ali Khan and Dr. Jordan DeCraker, and it can be used with T1 weighted or T2 weighted MRI data. If you want to know more about the actual process of hip unfold, I highly recommend you go to hipunfold.readthedocs.io, uh, where there's more information on that. Here I'm just showing you the actual command to get uh, the hip unfold outputs or to run hip unfold. Once you have installed everything, it's uh, one command at the command line. So it's very simple to run. You just call hip unfold, you give it your bids formatted data, you give it the directory where you want it, uh, the result to be outputted. Uh, you say you want it across all participants in your bids directory. You can also run it across single participants if you'd like. And then this is just setting up a snake make profile with hip unfold. So once this command, uh, once this command is ran, then uh, hip unfold will be generated for all the data in your bids directory across all your participants. So it's very simple to run. Here I'm showing you the volumetric outputs of hip unfold. So here's a T1 weighted image in the background with the volumetric outputs overlaid. So here you can see your anterior to posterior coordinates, your proximal to distal coordinates, and your inner to outer coordinates in volumetric space. And you also get your subfield labels in volumetric space. Furthermore, we can define uh, surfaces to plot our data on. So this is a middle surface. So um, halfway between the outer and inner surface of the hippocampus, we can define a middle surface. And you can plot the subfield labels, measures of gratification, curvature, and thickness onto this folded surface. And since we're only uh, across one thickness value, we can actually unfold these surfaces uh, where we only transition anterior to posterior and distal to proximal. And then you can plot values such as uh, the subfields, stratification, curvature, and thickness in this unfolded space. And you can actually also sample any volumetric data uh, along these vertices or surfaces. So you can plot any volumetric data in this way. So this project's contribution to open science. Well, this project contributed directly to the open source hip unfold by expanding its use to diffusion data. I also added functionality to get vectors along the APPD and IO directions. And I worked on some transformations from native to unfolded space. All software and code is publicly available on GitHub and at hipunfold.readthedocs.io. And any resulting articles will be submitted to journals that are openly available, including uh, preprints, to further the mission of open science. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Ali Khan, Jordan DeCraker, Azair Hussain, Jason Kai, my advisors, Corey Baron, Stefan Kohler, and the rest of the Con Lab. And of course, uh, I'd like to acknowledge COMP for funding this work and making this possible. Thank you for listening.